What's up guys? Welcome back to the weekly maintenance. If you are new to the channel, this is Arc World. This is the weekly maintenance. It happens every Wednesday, or at least Wednesday for me in my time zone. Uh, you know, noon Pacific Standard Time to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But let's talk about all the big news that has just been released and announced. So they gave us the May schedule for content. And unfortunately, the content is very light. We kind of anticipated this. If you've been here with the channel, you kind of know that the next big patch is going to be the ocean content, which is going to be at the end of summer target date. That is their target date for, you know, big content patch. And so we did also know that coming up next was going to be the gear turning into NFTs. So none of this stuff was a surprise, but we got a little bit more information on this stuff. So let's go through this update here. May updates and changes. And then we'll talk a little bit about the economy of North America, South America servers for the last three weeks. All right, so they say May 10th, after the maintenance, you are going to get this three lucky box bundle sale in the BSLT shop. And it says it's going to be there until further notice. Three lucky boxes are going to be sold for 10 BSLT per bundle. You're going to be able to buy it one per account. And it's going to have 25 to 35 gold when using the lucky box. So this is essentially the selling of gold that they did last week but a little bit worse. Now you have to buy three boxes for 10 BSLT. Last week it was one box for three BSLT and you could buy 10 for the entire week. So they've changed it up. They made it a little bit more expensive. You get more gold out of this slightly. Well, you get the same amount of gold for a little bit more BSLT. It's costing one BSLT extra. You're forced to buy three boxes. You buy it once a day. It's a really fluff nothingness patch, right? And so that's about it. Then it's a subdivided divided the conditions of upper equipment sections of the Archeum management fund. So what they're doing here is from 17,000 points and higher, your goals are now 500 points increments. And there's a table down below explaining this a little bit further. So let's go down and look at this. So if you have 11,000 gear score, you can buy one of the blue salt brotherhood stars. If you have 14, you can buy a total of six. And if you have 17,000, you're going to be able to buy a total of 16. I believe that is completely the same as before. And now what they did is now every 500 gear score higher, you're able to purchase more and more of these blue salt stars, the Brotherhood stars. So with them changing this, we're going to just make some inferences here, some guesses on this. There was a fear that the blue salt star was going to go away soon and that it was you know, running out of money, running out of funds, it was unsustainable. Well, with them changing and adjusting it, I don't think that they're gonna take this away anytime soon. They also did not affect the lower tiers. So 11,000 and 14,000, both are exactly the same from what I remember from before. So if there was any problems or issues or they were running out of funds, in this account type thing, I would expect them to, you know, nerf down the lower levels and yeah, not really tweak like the higher levels. What they're doing here, it, it appears to me is they're making it, uh, you can get more every day, the higher gear score is like at 23,000, you're able to buy 61 total of these things. So I believe that's way higher than what it was before. And then it just incremental gets a little bit higher ever as you get higher over 17,000. So they're, it looks like improving this. And to me, that says that they are gonna keep this here for a long period of time and that you don't really have to worry about it going away or they're running out of funds, like they have plenty of funds to fund this. So it seems like that this is here to stay at least for you know several more months, maybe six months, maybe a year would be my guess right now. Like as of now, it seems like this is a system that they are keeping and sticking to because why else would you improve it, right? Why else would you make it more lucrative or, or better for the higher end players if, if it's a system that's broken and they're getting rid of it and it's like, no, it's on the chopping blocks. So to me, that doesn't make any sense if they were planning to get rid of this or, or the funds were running out. If the funds were running out, they would try to decrease the amount of rewards that you could get. They would cut back. They would cut back the values. They would make it, you have to have higher gear scores to turn in and you get le you can turn in less stars. So overall, it just it doesn't feel like this is going away anytime soon, and I would feel very very confident saying that like I expect it to be here in six months. 
Like I expect this this management fund to be here as that kind of floor on the Archeum price, making it so it can't really go any lower than about 60 BSLT for 10,000 Archeum. So obviously the players make the economy and the players can sell it lower, but if you are smart then and someone put it at for 50 BSLT, you just buy that and then you just sell them to XL Games and get the stars and get get more money out of it. Like you just profit, right? It's just pure profit. So let's talk into the next one, May 17th now. They say that the roulette wheel will actually be closing on May 17th. So very, very big. Asia and North America regions will be leaving. The roulette wheel will be gone. The event will be newly introduced after a revision with component renewal in the future. So they said they're going to bring it back and they're going to change it, adjust it, but it's going to be gone for now. So that event is now going to be over May 17th. This is going to have a very big impact, I think, on the labor potion prices. I think this and then also the uh, lucky scroll prices should see a big increase in value with this roulette wheel going away. Like the announcement alone should probably spike the prices a little bit, but when it actually goes away and there's less lucky scrolls being given out and then there's less labor potions being given out, these prices of those things should go up, in my opinion. Obviously, these are all guesses and speculation. I cannot predict the future. So do your own research, make your own guesses, make your own predictions. But this is just what I think. So I think this is a good thing, roulette wheel going away. I know there were some people that were very addicted to this and uh, spent a lot of BSLT on this. So I, I don't know if they're going to be happy it's going away or sad because they can't gamble anymore on this, but I'm sure there's going to be more and more different gambling events. And then finally, the big news, which has got everyone up in arms right now on the Discord, May 24th after maintenance, the equipment item NFT conversion function will be introduced. Only equipment over six tier can actually be converted into an NFT and an NFT tied by selecting Polygon or Clayton Chain. So you're going to choose which chain you want it to be. When you convert an item to an NFT, there's going to be a fee of 500 BSLT. It's consumed. And the secondary transaction fee, when you sell it on the OpenSea network or Pala network or any of the NFT sites, it's going to be set at the same 7.5% as the land NFTs. Equipment converted into NFT can be traded and moved without regional or server restrictions. So the big news there, you know, Tier 6 is where you want to be if you want to transfer gear. Makes Tier 6 gear really, really valuable. This is most important right now. Like, So getting to Tier 6 is very, very important for a lot of players. It means all of the Asian server players that have Tier 6, which is about like 20 pieces of gear, can and possibly will be heading over to the North America server as of now. There is no server restrictions and no regional restrictions whatsoever. So if they want to, they can go ahead and take those items and transfer them over to another character or sell them to someone in the American server. So which means on May 24th, if this stays as is, the American server will no longer be easy mode. There's gonna be people that have 20,000 gear score on the American server because somebody is gonna transfer over a tier six weapon or armor. I'm pretty sure on this, even though there's only a few people that have them, I'm pretty sure someone is going to transfer this stuff over. So that means someone from the other servers could possibly just jump over and start playing on the American server as well and bring those items over. Because, I mean, if it's a lot easier and there's more players to play with, that may be, uh, you know, appealing to them, right? So if everyone is only 18 or 17 or 16,000 gear score and they can come over with 22,000 gear score or 21,000 gear score, and bring a couple players, they're untouchable. You know, if you're a 21,000 gear score and you're fighting against even our top number one player at Sizemon at like 18,000, I don't think Sizemon can kill you at 21,000 gear score. That's just the power of those those gear scores and, and the power of, you know, upgrading the, the gear, right? And the invalid system. So this is a very, very scary system because it ruins fresh start servers. If you can transfer freely with no server restrictions, which what we were under, the, under an impression before was that there was going to be a restriction on when you could transfer these items over to the new server, uh, a time period, because they knew they said, I believe it was in an AMA before the game launched, that they understand that you can't just flood a new server with powerful, powerful weapons It's because it's not a new server at that point. Um, so they're kind of backtracking on that, it looks like. And I 
you know, think that we need to tell them that this is wrong. Like there needs to be a period. I've suggested that there needs to be a six month period of a server before any tier six weapons could be introduced into the server from other regions. Obviously we know that the plan is for the game to be global and that you can transfer items and characters from server to server, from world to world. And the regions really don't mean much. We understand that. We, yeah, at least you should understand that. It was in the white paper. That's their goal. Like, you should be able to transfer from region to region. And you know you, you will in the future. But there should be some time crunch where it's like you can't have someone who's been playing for a year transfer gear over to a server that's three weeks old. Like, it, it's just, it does not make sense. It does not make balance sense. It doesn't make gameplay sense. It just does not make sense whatsoever. And if they keep this no server restrictions whatsoever, it literally ruins the European server launch at the end of the year. If they do go ahead and release the European server, but you can transfer in tier six gears, people are going to come over there with tier six gear. And you're going to see day one, someone who's got 18,000 or 17,000 or 20,000 gear score on day one, because they transferred it, bought it from someone else and brought it into a brand new server where literally everyone else is, you know, freaking 10,000 gear score day one. And you got this one person or two people or three people, however many people, because over time, more and more tier six weapons and armors are going to be created. And especially with the economy having two servers on the American server, we're seeing, you know, an influx of items being produced. So that means at a faster rate, we're going to see tier six weapons and armors. They have also changed the drop rates so it does appear that the yellow archaeum core is a little bit harder to drop right now yellow archaeum core drops shards whereas in the asian version there was a lot of cores that were just dropped like pure cores well now it does not seem like you can really get pure cores like i've seen one or two drop but that's been for two three weeks now three weeks in the game that i've seen you know one or two pure yellow archaeum cores drop and the majority of time, people are just picking up the shards. And the shards don't seem that plentiful. They are very, very cheap. They are one BSLT or less, generally. And you do need 100 of them to create a yellow Archeum core. And the reason they're so cheap is because no one can really craft them yet. You need to spend, you know, like a million Archeum to get your gear at tier 5, max level, ready to go. And then you need to have the yellow Shadowgun crystal to upgrade them as well. And the yellow shadow and crystal is going to be crazy expensive. I think it's about 2,000, 3,000 BSLT right now for a yellow shadow and crystal. And then I, I learned that the tier six upgrade chance starts at 25%. So you take all those materials, you take all that, and you gamble it for 25% to try and upgrade your gear. So when people do start to upgrade their gear and they do start having millions of Archeum spent in their tier five weapons and armors, then the cores are going to go away really quickly because a 25% upgrade chance means on average you're going to take four tries to upgrade that gear to tier six. And even on Asia, it's been eight months now. I believe there's only seven weapons, they said, that are upgraded to tier six. And there's a couple armor pieces as well. But there's not many because of just how low the chances are and how expensive the yellow Shadigan crystals are. So what I proposed in the supporters chat has been that the yellow Shadigan crystals actually need to be like drop more, but not directly. So what I was proposing and saying is that the yellow Shadigan crystals should actually have a crafting station, right? There should be a uh, Shadigan crystal crystal processing machine just like a shadow gun, just like the archaeum processing machine just like the bed and these should only be usable on extra large and mega lands and the reason is because the extra large and the mega lands are actually not that profitable for like a year or two into the server once you give them something special and unique like these shadow gun processing benches that none of the other lands have it actually increases the value of the extra large and the mega land significantly and so you could do it the extra large has one of these processing machines and then the mega has three or whatever you want to say on on how many quantity but obviously the mega should have more processing machines than the extra large 
And so the thought process was, we're going to go ahead and convert uh, a bunch, say a thousand of the basic Shadigan crystals, the, the white ones, the ones that are very cheap, that are kind of like failures that no one wants. They used for some other crafts as well. But the goal would be to convert a thousand of these crystals and put them into this this uh, processing machine, wait you know 12 hours or 24 hours, and then you have a chance to proc a bigger crystal. And so you would, bare minimum, you would get a blue crystal. So yes, that sounds kind of crazy, but you're spending a thousand of these to get a blue crystal, and then you have a, uh, you know, a smaller chance to get a purple crystal, and then you have a really small chance to get the yellow crystal, and then you have a micro chance to get the next one, the uh, what is going to be gold crystal, I believe it is. So it's going to be the tier seven Shadigun. So that's what I would recommend the game company do. So it, it does two things, right? It makes the Shadigun crystals a little bit more valuable all around. So the, the white ones are going to go up in value because, hey, it's like we can convert these into better crystals, but it also makes the larger lands more valuable. And then I recommend that these are not actually bought by NPCs, these are actually these these processing machines would be drops from world bosses. So specifically, I tied this all into the naval combat and the ocean combat. Uh, so it could be tied to anyone, but the idea would be a world boss and one of its really rare drops, you know, maybe like a one percent chance, is a Shadigan processing machine. So obviously, not everyone has a house, and if you are raiding and you end up getting this super rare drop. You're like, hey, cool. But if you don't have the house, if you don't have the extra large or the mega, now you have to sell this. And so you sell this, you put this on the auction house, and someone who's got a mega or an extra large house is going to be like, ooh, I want this. Because they can now turn, you know, the basic crappy shadow guns into guaranteed blues. I mean, it doesn't have to be guaranteed blues, right? It could be a green and then, you know, blue with a, a decent chance and so forth. So, I, you know, orange and chance. But I do like guarantee a blue because. You do want to make shadow guns a little bit easier to get because you need that for progression. Right now, if we keep up this whole shadow gun system, how each tier is going to keep needing a shadow gun, and each prior shadow gun, like so the green one is about 10 times less valuable than the blue one. The blue one is 10 times less valuable than the purple one. The purple one is 10 times less valuable than the yellow one, and so forth. By the time you get up to like tier eight, you're looking at like a hundred thousand dollars for a shadowkin crystal like so it just it can't there's no possible way that this system can stay exactly as it is there needs to be new ways to get shadowkin crystals into the game because no one is going to spend one hundred thousand dollars on a crystal that's a component of these crafts and like attempting to upgrade or attempting to uh you know level up your house type thing like you can see even just uh some of the recipes in game if you look in the recipes a lot of them require purple shadow and crystals and those recipes just look astronomically expensive because the purple shadow and crystals are around 300 400 bslt right now so like the price of the purple shadow and crystals should actually come down some in my opinion right like over time the price probably will but we haven't seen that really happen in eight months in asia the shadow and crystals are still really really expensive and in a way, it's a nice thing for landowners because you make these Shadigan crystals by harvesting the land, harvesting the trees, the plants, the crops, and you have this really low RNG chance. But there needs to be some way to you know earn a big amount of money for, for different players. So there needs to be bigger rewards for raid bosses or harder content, uh, dungeons and things like that. Like, But they can't just keep adding new, new, new stuff. They have to slowly introduce... The next level of things they need to slowly introduce tier seven but they need to make tier six a little bit easier to get for people right so that's where they're at right now they're right now they're at tier six tier five tier five is is fairly simple fairly easy people can get there it just takes many months and tier six is almost impossible because of the amount of archium and then the amount of shadow guns that are needed and it just it needs to come down a little bit it needs to have some more progression there so that's my thoughts on the shadow guns and what's going to happen here with the future. All the stuff we talked about here was actually on the roadmap. So if you are concerned or worried about any of this stuff, like don't know what's going to happen in the future, simply take a look at the roadmap here on Arc World uh, Discord, and you can see 
they are doing exactly what they said they wanted to. So instance dungeons, check mark, that is done. And now next up was equipment item NFT conversion system. This is next. This is what they're coming with. After that is done, the next patch that they're working on is the ArcLife BSLT staking system. So that's going to be where you can stake your BSLT and get some potential rewards out of this or potential get, you know, account buffs. We don't know what rewards you're going to get, but the staking system is the next system that they're working on. After that, next up is ancestral skills. So we'll get new abilities and new skills. So that is the path. And then if we go further, we can see next up is marine lands, naval battles, and ships. And so we know that they're targeting the end of summer for this, which to me sounds like around like October, September. That to me is when end of summer is roughly. So if we do process of elimination, that means we get the other stuff about one of these things every month. So next month, it will be around the arc life staking system and then around like june ish we'll get ancestral skills and of course we'll probably get little events here and there and so this is my hope even though this update this this calendar sucked like there's no content right there's no new monsters there's no new rifts there's no new drops really like literally it's dry there's not much here but we will get events so we i'm expecting to get an event after the server goes live and after this maintenance some kind of you know farming event maybe a land nft event or something to convert uh infusions some kind of event is gonna happen some gambling event possibly like uh, loyalty kind of like login events like something is i'm expecting to happen and i will be kind of shocked if we don't get anything uh after this maintenance so we'll have to take a look and reevaluate what the game company is doing after this maintenance and after you know we see if there's an event if there's no event if there's no event it's definitely going to suck for some people uh you know people are getting bored i would say slightly bored with the activities because you know same old same old but yeah this is <laughs> this is the game guys this is an mmorpg it's designed for years and years and years uh, things are not going to be easy obviously what i recommended with the shadigan crystals uh, it's not like mega drop rights right away it's you know, a 1% chance to get from a raid boss for a Shadowgun processing machine, right? So that would be a boss that you'd have to kill 100 times in theory to get one of these machines. And just think of how many extra large and mega landowners are out there. There's, you know, a couple hundred of those people out there and they would all need at least one of these things. So you would need at least 200, 300, 400 machines of these guys. Like for everyone to have all the stuff that they need, it would take many, 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 probably years to do and one of the cool things too is that what you could do for the upgrading system on these guys in order to upgrade you can make it so where they need two of the shadow gun processing mach machines right so you could take you know your machine and you have to get another machine and then combine them together upgrade it to grand to get a better processing results so that would just feed into the system where you need more and more and more of these guys i like that system a lot where you have to take you know not just one piece of equipment to upgrade it but you have to take two of the same kind of thing and then convert them together to make a higher grade material. <clears throat> anyway, guys, <clears throat> my voice is going. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments down below. How would you increase the Shadowgun drop rates? Would you just make it easier to get good Shadowguns out of the Shadowgun ore? Uh, or would you introduce drops? Would you introduce tradebacks to get these things? Uh, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section. Love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching.